Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, hopefully a short video this time. It's an AdLib compatible sound card. So this is manufactured by AA Pro, I think. Yeah, that's the company. So it's assembled in the UK. It's got a serial number type warranty thing here, which is a bit decrepit, isn't it? It's obviously, you know, not stood the test of time. It looks really nice. The uh, points here, you know, the edge connector is, looks like it's solder coated, so that's not a good thing. I think those might need, um, yeah, and here, look how scratched and marked those are. I think what I would do is get some flux on there and, uh, you know, braid to clean that up. But this, uh, you know, that pin there looks a bit funny. Look, um, it's not working. It's not working at all. Um, so, you can see, I removed the bracket in order to be able to test it on a machine on the bench here, because when it's got that on, obviously it's not going to fit into something on the bench. You remove the back plate and then it will fit in. So it's just an 8-bit ISA AdLib clone sound card. So you've got your uh, headphone slash line out here, a couple of op amps, a 7.4 series there, 2.4.5, maybe that's faulty. A gal, that could be the issue with this another op amp i think and a yamaha chip there so this the opl is it opl one probably is ym3812 so yeah i am assuming that that's like an opl one compatible or an actual opl one chip and then we've obviously, obviously got some passives got some capacitors on here uh capacitors are here you're saying is it going to be a bad cap and my thoughts are no because these are the rubicon i think which, they're not, they're not bad Rubicons, I don't think. I think Rubicons are pretty good. Oh, and some Nichicons, the small ones and Nichicons. So I think, build-wise, the components on this are pretty good. And I would have imagined that when this was new, it would be a lot better than it is now. You know, it looks a bit decrepit here, and that's a bit decrepit, and there's a fault with it. But it's not that bad, is it? It's nicely assembled and everything. I quite like it. It'd be interesting if we can get this working to hear what it sounds like. And you can see it's dirty. Can you see that? It's just, you know, I think a consequence of uh, what's happened to it in the past. Now, this kindly came from William, 3DO Kid. He included it with a load of stuff he sent me. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and fix this within this video. Well, this might be the shortest repair ever. I don't know. I'll just uh, pull this chip out. Can you see that pin? Squash right down. So, is that the issue with this? I don't know. It's, it's folded right under. So, I don't think that was making a connection with the socket. I'm just going to try and pull it straight out like that and then push the pin back into approximately position where it should be. It's been pushed right up that actually. Um, it's like what I need to do is grab it and pull it downwards a little bit like that, that's it. And then we'll use the leg strain here from Cathars, which I absolutely love. This is one of my favourite tools now. Yeah, it's still recessed, you know, a little bit. You know, it's not quite as low as these because it's been pushed upwards at some point. I don't really know how that's happened. It's like it needs pressing there down like that and then bending back out again. But yeah, it probably needs a bit of solder on it that because otherwise that's going to snap off. And that's the YM3812, by the way, which is the OPL chip. Let's get it back on, well, back in to the socket here. It's gone in okay. So, yeah, the other chips, yeah, the, that looks a bit crooked there, doesn't it? Um, but the legs look all right. I was just really seeing a, a, a dodgy leg there that made me want to take that out. So let's give it another try, see if it's detected in the Wolfenstein 3D. Woohoo, that was the issue, <laughs> it's now detected, ad lib. There we go, I'm going to connect some headphones up and we'll see if we get any sound out. <laughs> it's got to be the shortest repair ever on my channel. It's going to be a 30 second video or something, so anyway, uh, headphones. Yeah, precariously reaching around the back here, and obviously you saw me take off the plate before, and it's just because it's on a bench. When something like this is on a bench, it's really hard to work on unless the the motherboard is raised up in order to give clearance to the uh, you know the metal backplate sound ad lib yes we have ad lib music oh yes oh that's so cool there's no volume adjustment here so i'll just try and put the thing up to the uh, camera I'm not sure where the mic is 
I mean, with headphones on, it's the perfect volume level. So I've got some Acer speakers connected here. There we go, ad lib detected. I'm not sure if it remembers you enabled it or not. Yes, it does. Just turn up a bit. Oh, yes. Sweet. So, massive thanks to uh, William. I can put this now with one of these two PC cards. I'll probably fit this with the 286 actually. I've got a Sound Blaster Pro 2 on the way that needs repairing. That will go with the, this board actually, the one you're looking at here. This is the A2386 here. Now I just enabled the video uh, BIOS uh, shadow wrap, you know, shadowing, and the main BIOS. Just see if it's any smoother. Yeah, there's a little bit of slowdown there. You can see that just occasional stutter, but it's a lot better actually. Yeah, a bit of stutter there. Look, uh, fire there. Go. So yeah, the sound is a wee bit crusty there, but. I think that's probably due to the freezes here, you know, the, the graphics card I'm using, it's just a Trident, it's still got the 18900 chip on it. Anyway, that works, fantastic. I'm not sure if this uses an IRQ actually, because, you know, there could be some sort of IRQ clash here, but, yeah, I'll research that see if we can work out whether it is using an IRQ. Not hearing much noise on that sound card either. I'll be honest, when I had the headphones on I couldn't hear any like clicks or distortions or anything. But you saw as we played there, whenever you get the freezers the sound breaks up a bit. But that's just because of the freezers, it's got nothing to do with the sound card. I noticed that before. I fitted the sound card. Yeah, so as you saw, that pin was folded up. It's uh, hard to believe, isn't it? That's all that was wrong with it. Uh, now, off camera, I didn't show you before that, I actually swapped this 7.4 series here. That was the first thing I did. And it was just the same. And then I thought, well, let's just take the chips out and just see what state the sockets are in. And when we came to this, this is the first one I did, actually, after tinkering with that. And then we had that folded pin. So, yeah, that's, that's the issue. So I think the next thing I'll do is get some flux on here on both sides and do them one at a time and we'll just use the braid just to try and clean up hopefully you can see they just they just don't look very good do they yeah see if we can clean those up some more now technically these could be plated with something i don't know it could be like nickel plated or something but they just look awful don't they they just look terrible so yeah i am gonna just get a wee bit of flux all the way along here yeah and i'm gonna use the antex just because i like the shape of the tip I've got a new tip actually for the Heiko, but I want to show that on video because it was a gift. So yeah, and that was, I don't know, about 18 months ago. I haven't had a chance to get, it could have even been longer than 18 months ago. I haven't had a chance to uh, do the video on that. And I want to do a video on it just to say thank you to the person that sent it. Uh, anyway, so let's just literally just heat and hang on, is that on? Yes, it is slide like that so I'm not going to bother doing the other side I don't think because that has literally made zero difference to the appearance there And of course, solder like that, the cotton ball just go black all the time. So I think rather than ultrasonic this, I'm just going to clean this manually. So I'm going to use cotton ball to start with just to collect all of the mucky marks. And you can see them. We get a light. There's dirt all over that. Yeah, so it's still a bit wet around that component there, but you know what? 
that looks pretty darn good. Yeah, this side is definitely worse after I uh, tinkered with it. Then again, you can see it's oxidising here, look already. Anyway, very pleased with that. So I've printed a uh, label here. Let's try and get that line straight. That's about as straight as it's going to get, I think. It's so small now, I <laughs> can't peel the thing off the back. You may wonder why I just like to stick these things on for my own benefit. I forget when I did something and then I look back at something like this in a few years and I'll be like, ah, oh, remember when I fixed that now in 2023. As this video is a bit short, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about the YM3812 in general. But it was used in arcade machines as well as synthesizers. Lots of the Yamaha synthesizers used it. There were quite a number of synthesizers used the sound chip but it was also in a lot of arcade boards you can see here in main you can click the button to filter based on the sound chip and it lists hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cabinets you know that used the ym3812 in many cases there was a second sound chip alongside it so i mean just scrolling down the list here i could see some games that caught my eye like robocop and real ghostbusters and rygar funnily enough they all begin with r uh, yeah, and starting Robocop here. I think you can tell that it sounds a bit ad libby at various points in the music and stuff. But obviously, the other sound chip that this board uses, probably for the sound effects, I think. You know, you've got like, some PCM type stuff for the sound effects, you know, samples and things. I don't think the 3812 is doing those. Yeah, and again in Rygar here, you can hear very ad libish the music. If you want to know more about it, check out Things Made Simple link. There'll be a link down below in the description. There's a really good article there that covers literally every aspect of the functionality of a YM3812. Basically, you've got four channels and it does like synthesis based on sine waves. So, you know, you could sort of chop the sine wave and just have the positive peaks with gaps in between where the negatives would be. You could double up the, you know, swing the negative into a positive and have double sine wave peaks. It supports envelope stuff and feedback. You can get some interesting sounds out of it. So quite possibly the shortest, most boring fixed video on my channel. But uh, anyway, massive thanks to William for this. If you want it back, William, just let me know. I'm quite happy to send it back. I mean, I really love it, but I can buy another one, build one. And you can build these or buy them from AA Pro. I think they sell on eBay. And I've got an IDE card that I bought as a kit from them. They did me a good deal on it. So that'll be coming up soon. This will go with my 286. And it looks like an original chip. You get lots of these as fakes. So that's something to be aware of. And as I mentioned in annotations earlier on, just use as a base stress. There are no jumpers on this. It uses like the 388H uh, base address and uh, you know, it makes it ideal for putting into a PC because you don't have any DMA and IRQ conflicts and things, you can still see these look awful. And that's one thing I'd say to AA Pro, the company behind this and anybody else manufacturing clones for things like this, don't go hassle like this, go gold plated. Everyone will pay a few pounds more for gold plating. It's quite nice isn't it, it's come out really clean and stuff. And as I mentioned as well, no noise, I can't hear any hiss or any noise. It's really good, this card. As cheap as something like this is, I think it's fantastic. And the original Adlib, by the way, came out in 1987. 
and the reason this became one of the most popular cards is because there's so few components needed and it was one of the first cards out there so it got adopted really really quickly on the PC and it's you know it's part of what made the PC multimedia and things like the Sound Blaster followed on and as I mentioned I've also got a Sound Blaster Pro 2 coming that's a repair and I've got a couple of AWE 32s and the Sound Blaster 16 to fix as well so those are going to be more actual repairs versus just <laughs> taking the chip out Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.